I'm a big fan of Emily St. John Mandel, but it didn't start out that way. I read Station Eleven, which is probably still her most famous and successful work. It's recently been adapted into a TV series, which I haven't seen yet. And I thought it was fine. I liked it well enough. I didn't really believe the hype, but I thought it was a really good book. But the more you read, the more you get to understand what she's doing, and the genius of Emily St. John Mandel becomes clear. I recently read The Glass Hotel and Sea of Tranquility back to back over the course of a few days, and now I really get it. The genius of Emily St. John Mandel comes, I think, from her ability to question, poke at, and kind of investigate the modes and purpose of fiction and storytelling themselves. That sounds really, really pompous, but it remains true. Emily St. John Mandel, with her books, has more and more examined themes, events, storytelling techniques, and found a way to heighten those things through her writing. At least that's how it seems to me. If you look at Station Eleven, for example, which I don't have on me, I can imagine that book coming about because she was looking at post-apocalyptic fiction, dystopian fiction, post-civilization fiction, and asking a simple question, which is, what about what we made? Almost all post-apocalyptic fiction is about human survival and what we build after the fact. After civilization breaks down, when there are zombies roaming around, when there are inhospitable areas of land, what do we do? How do we adapt? And that's always been exciting. From Cormac McCarthy's The Road to The Walking Dead, it's all interesting. But with Station Eleven, Mandel wanted to focus on the things we've created. What makes humanity worthwhile? And as someone who believes in art above all other things, I'm totally with her. Station Eleven was her looking at the things we've created, mostly the art, and looking at how that survives, how that adapts, and I find that really, really beautiful. I thought that the book itself, in its plotting, its execution, its characters, its events, was all fine, but thematically, it's a genius piece of fiction. What happens to the works of Shakespeare? What happens to the art we've created? And I remember thinking this years and years ago, eventually the earth will die, eventually the earth will blow up or something. And what happens to the works of Shakespeare? What happens to the architecture that we've built? What happens to all of the beautiful things made by human hands? And that's kind of what Mandel is asking and answering here with Station Eleven, which is why it feels like a more hopeful book amongst post-apocalyptic fiction. She's coming at a familiar genre and theme and idea from a different angle, and it's really a question worth answering and exploring. But like any good author, Mandel doesn't just sit on that. She doesn't just go, okay, this is kind of my angle. I look at genres, I look at ideas, I look at familiar tropes, and I bring fresh life to them. No, she has pushed herself further and further with each subsequent book. And I should here point out that I haven't read anything that she wrote pre-Station Eleven, but her genius is apparent to me regardless because I've seen her escalation as an author from Station Eleven to now. And you really can see it from Station Eleven through to the Glass Hotel and then Sea of Tranquility. The progression in her ideas, concepts, and executions is incredible. As I was reading the Glass Hotel, I was confused over and over again by the point of it. This is a thriller of sorts. Thrillers are often books with mystery, they're kind of bleak in their tone and setting, there's probably going to be some blood, there might be police investigations, a crime scene, there are certain tropes and ideas. This is a thriller, but it doesn't have any of that. There are mysteries, but they are pretty minor, and there are other things that aren't mysteries, just revelations. There is a massive revelation that actually gets spoiled in the blurb, and that revelation twists the whole narrative. In fact, the narrative is constantly twisted because we shift from protagonist to protagonist in such a haphazard, careless way that it makes you feel like Mandel doesn't care about us and how we react to it. And she obviously does, because emotionally, the plot is still held together. It still has weight, and you still care. If it was as haphazard as I just said, 
it wouldn't work at all. But I kept asking what the point of the book was. I saw what it was doing to genre, I understood that it was playing on mysteries and thrillers in really fun ways, yeah, that's obvious. But why? And I came to the conclusion that this is a kind of an experiment. The Glass Hotel was her looking at how plots play out, how plots are established at the beginning, how characters are established, how their relationships change and grow, the arcs of individuals and the arcs of relationships, and she's poking and prodding and toying with that. I could imagine that this is a book that probably took several different drafts, that was reinvented again and again in the process of it being finished. It might have been a book that took quite a while to write, because it's a piece of experimentation. It's a book of obvious themes, about regret and the choices we make coming to bite us in the arse, about how our choices and our behaviours affect those around us and how much we're supposed to care about that. That happens on a macro and micro scale in this book. It really is about choices and consequences. But none of that is as important as the writing process, as the kind of behind the scenes. If this was a film, I would care less about the film, and I'd be more interested in seeing a documentary of the making of the film, if that makes sense. The ways in which this book plays with plot and character, the way it plays with chronology and perspective, is really, really fun. With Station Eleven, Mandel was exploring themes and ideas and approaching them from new angles, and that made it a really good book. With The Glass Hotel, she's looking at how plots are structured, the rules of storytelling, the rules of relationships within stories, and she's wondering how she can reframe those things, tell them out of order, or tell them in a way that feels haphazard but really isn't, and can the same emotional results and thematic results still be delivered? Can we still care about these characters and their relationships? Can we still care about the plot revelations, given that they're given away in the blurb? And the answer is yes. Emily St. John Mandel, with The Glass Hotel, is looking at how stories can be written in more experimental and strange and literary ways, and the results remain the same. This is still a thriller, this is still a book where you care about the characters and the events and the results of it all, and it's still a book whose themes remain pretty clear and you can connect with them on a very existential level. And yet the way that all of that plays out, the way it's all revealed and resolved, is different. Mandel is asking, how can stories be told differently, and what is the result of that? and the result is still a really good novel. It's like she's asking us to think differently about how stories can be written, trusting readers to still get out of it what they would get out of a more simply and methodically and familiarly written story. I think that's really cool. Then there's Sea of Tranquility, which is unquestionably my favourite Emily St. John Mandel book. One obvious reason is that it's very, very good science fiction, and I love good science fiction. The other reason is it kind of feels like a culmination of what she's been doing, someone who is constantly questioning how stories are told, and what exactly literature is for, and here she comes up with something that feels like a compromise, where she is writing in an experimental way, asking big thematic questions, using genre fiction as a way to ask those questions, but at its heart this is just a very good science fiction story. This is a book that is set across generations, centuries, beginning in 1912 and reaching all the way to 2401. We can see from the contents page where we're going to go and how much time we'll spend there. In 1912, we follow a British guy who's from a really fancy family of poshos, who gets banished to the Canadian wilderness because he doesn't like the concept of British Empire, and his family says, oh, oh, fuck off then, off you go now. And he ends up travelling all the way to the western edge of Canada, he's on Vancouver Island, and he ends up in the town, if you can call it a town, where the Glass Hotel is set, at least at the beginning. And that's the first really confident and daring thing that Mandel does, is overlap these two novels. Sea of Tranquility and The Glass Hotel are connected. They have characters and settings that overlap. First, a setting. But then, 
very key characters from The Glass Hotel are in this book. We jump to 2020 in the second section, and in that section you have who is arguably the protagonist of The Glass Hotel playing a really key role in this. I've read both books, and I read them chronologically. I don't know what it would be like to read them the other way around, or only read this and not have read that at all. I have no idea. It's actually quite hard to imagine. I assume that you don't need to read one, but they do feel intrinsically connected. And it's fun that Mandel has created a kind of connected shared universe here. It's not necessary, but it's like she's asking, well, why not? I like these settings, I like these characters, I want to see more of them. And the ways that they overlap are big and small. The big ways I won't give away, but one really small way is there's a character in the Glass Hotel who goes to prison. His cellmate says that the last guy in their cell left a little carving on the wall. That carving gets explained in this, and you might not even notice it because it's just a tiny little thing. And as it happened in here, I went, ah, and that was it. <laughs> uh, that was it. It's insignificant, but why not? That's one of the minor things that I really appreciate about Mandel. It represents an attention to detail. It represents a consideration for her craft, for the stories that she's already created, that she's proud of, and what could happen next. She is dedicated to this, and that's beautiful. When you consider how Station Eleven is all about how we maintain and cherish the art and beauty that humans have created over centuries. The fact that she cares so much for her art seems obvious, but it's still nice to see it. And this book is, again, similar to The Glass Hotel in the sense that it asks you to just bear with it and watch things play out. Because in part one, that's set in 1912, not a lot happens. That section ends with our protagonist meeting a guy who claims to be a priest but he doesn't really believe him. They meet sort of at the edge of a local forest, and the priest comes up to him and says, yeah, yeah, I'm here to replace the, the regular local priest. And our protagonist says, I don't, I don't believe you, because this is a tiny place and we know everything that goes on. If you had arrived on a boat yesterday, we would have heard about it. It would have been all anyone talks about, so I don't believe you. And then we move to 2020, and you just have to deal with that little mystery there. In 2020, another weird thing happens, and then we're thrust 200 years into the future, to a pandemic, which Mandel loves to write about. We keep moving forward by about 100 to 200 years each time, and you just have to bear with it until we get to the point. And that point comes along when we reach the furthest chronological moment halfway through the book, and then things start to go in reverse, and it all makes sense. And that revelation halfway through is fucking massive and really, really exciting. If you're a fan of science fiction, it'll hit you really, really hard. And even if you're not, it'll turn you into one. Mandel loves experimenting with plotting and structure, with how characters interact with each other, and with how we interact with our fiction. I think that's probably the thing I love most, is that she has a lot of respect for the reader. She respects our time, she respects our attention span, she respects our minds and our abilities to emotionally connect with these people, and with her plots. She respects our respect for her stories. Like, take this for example, as I said, this jumps forward. There will be a moment where a story just kind of cuts off. There is no resolution, there is no satisfaction. You are left hanging in irritating suspense, and then you move on and you have to connect with new people in a new place with a new purpose. But she asks you to hang on, and she trusts that you will, and you trust that she'll deliver, and she does. There is a sense of mutual respect between the reader and the writer when it comes to her books. You see it in The Glass Hotel as well, in fact, arguably even more so, and it pays off. Emily St. John Mandel has an appreciation for our relationship to art itself. Her art and art on a thematic, aesthetic level. She knows the importance of human connection to art, and so she explores that again and again in a thematic way within her fiction, and in a kind of metatextual way through our relationship to her fiction itself, our tangible, chronological connection to her books as we touch them, as we read them, as we spend time with them. It's absolutely incredible. She is fascinated by art itself and our relationship to it, with Station Eleven, 
She explored that in a thematic and narrative sense, and with these two, it's almost in a kind of metaphysical way. It's huge. I am consistently bowled over by her and how she approaches fiction itself. The question she asks about how narratives work, and how far she can push the rules of narratives, the tropes of genres, and the way that she plays with and pokes at and teases the relationship between human beings, human beings' minds, our capacity for love and attention and aesthetics and beauty and art, and art itself. Her art and the art within her stories. It's incredible. I feel like I've thought too much about it, but I hope that she would respect that. Emily St. John Mandel is a queen of fiction, of plotting, of storytelling. She plays with the rules and the tropes. She bends them, she twists them around, and she sees what can be done, how far she can stretch it, and whether or not it still works as a narrative, whether it still works thematically and on an emotional level. And because she is confident at what she does, she understands these rules and therefore can break them and bend them, it all works out. And I think that's incredible. What a marvelous writer. What a gift to art. There you go, there's my thoughts. Subscribe for books.